Hello and welcome back and that is right today I want to show you for just $30 how to install a USB to 5 gigabit Ethernet adapter on your Synology NAS. Now there's going to be some of you watching this video going, hang on, he made a video like this using this some five years ago and you're absolutely right this is the qnap 5gb adapter here it takes advantage of a different controller inside also it knocks around for about 80 dollars right now online they've actually discontinued it but recently we did a review where we were talking about the wav linked usb to 5gbe adapter that you can pick up now again for about 30 nicker unfortunately synology has suspended support of any usb network adapters on their platform right the way back since DSM-7. We're currently in DSM-7.2.2. However, there are enterprising users online, again, we talked about a couple of them before, BBQQ and Dave Russell, who are over on GitHub modding things, changing things, and ultimately allowing users to take advantage of their hardware a great deal better. And that's what this video is about. I'm gonna be utilizing a little guide that was put together and some resources put together by user BBQQ over on GitHub to get this 5GB adapter working on our Synology NAS. But before we go any further, the standard disclaimers, of course. Number one, this is totally not covered by your Synology hardware warranty. Doing this runs a particularly good risk of completely invalidating your Synology support. You're using this system in a way that they have not authorized and not in a way, authorized being a strong word, they've not said that their system can be used. So anything that goes wrong means you're using it in a way that they didn't certify it could be used for. Ergo, if it gets knackered, they can turn around and say no. The next thing to keep in mind, that not all systems need this. Ones like this one, this is the 1522, can actually be upgraded to 10 GBE thanks to an adapter. And then there are a lot of Synology NASs out there that you won't need to go for a 5G. But unfortunately, there's also a lot of them that have no means to upgrade the network ports and having one GBE can be something of a heel these days. Lastly, although this adapter that I've got here is one that I had in a review that I filmed about a week ago, it's worth bearing in mind that this is a USB Type-C adapter, and very, very few to, uh, Synology NASs at the time of recording have USB Type-C. However, it's very easy to get hold of USB Type-C to Type-A adapters for about a nicker online, and they will allow you to change this USB-C adapter into a USB-A adapter on this system. Just make sure you don't get one that's gonna limit you down. Make sure you are getting a USB 3.2 adapter specifically. It might cost you an extra quid or two. I'll try to link to one in the description. Last thing, back up, 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 back up your data before you do anything like this. Anything you do on a system that is gonna modify always runs the risk of an issue. And therefore, backing up your data if you're not already doing it is paramount. So do it before you pursue this guide. But now you've done all that, let's crack straight on. First thing you need to do is go into the description below and you'll find a link over to BBQQ's uh, repository and all these active projects right now and download the R8152 Realtek modified driver where it's been repackaged as a Synology installer, an SPK. Download it locally to your system. Now, you're gonna see lots of different listings there. These all correspond to different CPUs and different versions of Synology. So one, make sure you know your version of Synology by the control center if you've got the most recent one it's 7.2.2 or 7.2.1 and after that find your cpu if you don't know what cpu you've got go into the control panel of your synology nas go into the hardware information find out your cpu and find out the hardware architecture there you will find it very very easily and make sure you download the correct version from there when you've got it downloaded head back into the NAS user interface. Next thing you need to do is go to the App Center. In the App Center, from there, go into the Settings menu. From the Settings menu in the App Center, enable installation of third-party unknown applications there. Again, know what you are doing. You are using the system in a way that some you do not cover. From there, go and click the Upload or Browse tab there and upload the file that you downloaded from BBQQ's repository onto the Synology NAS to start that installation. And from there, not only will it install the application uh, like any other app, but the Synology notification and installation wizard will guide you through it, although it will warn you that you are, again, using a third-party app. Now, the first time you do this, it's gonna fail. Don't panic. 
that's normal, it happens, it happens to everyone. The next thing you need to do is head back into the control panel. From the control panel, go into the terminal option and enable SSH. Don't worry about changing the ports, leave it by default. And remember, after you've done this, disable it later on. Don't forget to do that, I'll remind you at the end of the video. Now you've enabled SSH and clicked OK to enable it, you need to install a command line terminal applications. You can use Windows PowerShell. Personally, I like to use Putty. I would download Putty, it's completely free. It's a great terminal application, it allows for a lot of uh, copy and paste and a lot of ease of use, I would say. I use it in most of my videos. Download Putty and install it. Then, when you open up the Putty window, enter the IP, that traditionally 192.168, whatever, although your IP might be different, location of the NAS into the available window there and enter the terminal via SSH, logging into the NAS. Keep in mind when you're logging in that your password will be invisible. You'll enter your username, make sure you use a username that's got enough power to install apps. And when you type in your password, it will be invisible, but it is there. After you've done that, copy and paste the command that is hopefully on screen right now, but it's also linked in the description below. Once you put that in there, it will go ahead and install the backend needed within SSH to do this. From there, you can either close um, the uh, putty application or you can just type quit, but ultimately close that down. Now head back into the Synology NAS and try to reinstall the BBQQ installer, that SPK that we just tried to install. And what you'll find this time is it will work. Now, once it's installed, it will appear like any other app in that app center. Chances are, however, it will be disabled by default. What you need to do is go to it and enable it and boot it. Once you've done that, head to your physical Synology NAS Get yourself your WavLink or third party, because I'm sure there'll be other versions of this coming out soon, um, USB to 5G adapter, and connect the USB to one of the available ports. I'm installing it in the front port here, but realistically, you want to use one of the back ones, because that front one has got USB backup written all over it. From there, you should be able to now utilize your USB adapter on your Synology NAS. Keep in mind, if it doesn't immediately appear, it can help if you restart the Synology NAS system. But also keep in mind when you do that, that you will have to go back into the App Center and re-enable that USB adapter. So now you've added your USB adapter to your Synology NAS, let's talk a little bit about it there. Just here in the verdict and the summary at the end. So number one, I will say, this is not a stable long-term plan because chances are every single time you install even a relatively minor update on your Synology NAS, there is a decent chance that the driver will be broken or will need repair or will just be completely unusable and therefore your 5G output won't be usable. The next thing to keep in mind, uh, having a 5GBE adapter that can give you between 550 to close, I think it's 579 megabytes per second total maximum bandwidth, it doesn't guarantee that. Keep in mind that depending on the NAS you use, or the SATA SSDs or hard drive you choose to use, the level of performance that you can get will be heavily dependent on the CPU, the memory, and the storage media inside. Case in point, I took advantage of a DS923 with four hard drives inside, put them into a RAID 5 environment, and then tried to get as better, a good a sound, uh, bandwidth as possible out of this adapter. And unfortunately, I was only able to hit around 350, 400 megabytes per second because they were mechanical hard drives. So do keep that in mind. You might be thinking, woohoo, I want to get myself a new adapter and update my bandwidth externally, but keep in mind, you're not guaranteed to maximize that bandwidth on some NAS devices. And finally, keep in mind this is an unofficial modification. Even during my early usage of this adapter, occasionally the output and display of the network adapters and interfaces was not perfect. Occasionally I couldn't reset the MTU, that option for the MTU would disappear. And as mentioned, sometimes on the case of a restart after an update, the driver dis uh, disabled itself and needed repair, so I couldn't go ahead and continue to use it. This is not a stable long-term plan. But nonetheless, for those that don't mind running their system in that fashion, this is a great way to add five times gigabit performance to even the most domestic lower car Synology NAS drive. Now, none of the drivers I could see online, not including BBQQs or others, were 
perfect for the retail uh, the Realtek chip inside this device. The drive that you're installing is actually one that was previously used for 2.5G adapters, but gradually it has started supporting more adapters, including this one. So a better method of doing this may appear in the next six to 12 months. So although when I've got the link below to BBQQ or uh, Dave Russell's link is available to you, keep in mind they may have a better, newer, and more efficient and stable a repo, uh, sorry, um, app in the repo center available to you. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. There should be a written guide link below. And I know I keep saying it, and I know I'm being a worry walk, but back up your data first. And two, keep in mind what you're doing is unofficial. Don't let something like this potentially brick your system and therefore get upset with Synology about something that they were annoyingly clear they were prepared to support. But the rest is up to you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.